what is up people and welcome to another video in previous videos we've taken a look at how to install kubernetes on docker for windows we've taken a look at the command line utility called kubectl to basically work with kubernetes now that we have kubernetes up and running and we know how to use the command line let's take a look at the kubernetes deployment object which basically allows us to configure and operate deployments so let's get cracking All right, so Kubernetes deployments. What is a deployment? A deployment controller provides declarative updates to pods and replica sets. You describe a desired state in a deployment, and then a deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at a controlled rate. Now, what does this mean? In order to understand what a deployment is, we have to take a step back and think about traditional infrastructure. We all have production servers that are load balanced that have a bunch of things installed that we're trying to maintain and keep healthy. Now, how do we normally set this up? We use scripts, PowerShell scripts, bash scripts, shell scripts, whatever have you. So let me tell you guys a secret about scripts. Scripts are prone to failures. They are a sequence of steps that run from top to bottom and can fail at any stage of completion. They have no guarantee that they're going to end at the bottom successfully and they'll leave the system in a bad state and you don't want this to happen. Now with this deployment dilemma of scripts in the Kubernetes world, um, the Kubernetes folks have taken a new stance on this by running with a concept called desired state. So let's say we have this environment, right? Um, we want to be able to describe our desired state. So we, instead of using scripting that run from top to bottom, we want to say that, hey, I want, I would like V1 of my application running. Um, then I also want to describe that I want minimum two instances running to make my system resilient and highly available. I also want my system to be load balanced and resilient for performance. So the other thing is when we roll out new version of the application, I want to be able to describe to Kubernetes that or whatever system it is that, hey, I want my um, application drained gracefully. So I want traffic removed from version one and then I want version two introduced. And then the same thing with the, the other instances. I want to be able to roll deployments. If the infrastructure where my application runs on dies, I want the system to automatically roll out my application on working infrastructure. We also don't want to care where our application is running. Um, we want to de decouple the system from its underlying infrastructure. We also want to be able to update our desired state to say, hey, there's more demand for traffic. I want uh, four instances of my application running so I can automatically scale up and down to meet business demands. We also don't want to manage port conflicts. So we want to give developers a better experience by by saying that all the applications can run on the same ports without port conflicts. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is our desired state. We want to be able to describe this in a single file and then Kubernetes just takes care of this and looks at the actual state. And this is where the control loops come in because Kubernetes will look at this what um, desired state that we want and basically look at the actual state and make sure that the actual state becomes the desired state. So a Kubernetes deployment is a type of object that describes the desired state of our system and how we want a deployment to occur. So let's take a look at this deployment YAML file. This is our desired state. So we define the application version that we want to roll out. We also define that we want a minimum of two instances. So we tell Kubernetes that we want to have a strategy of a rolling update deployment so that we, we always want to have at least two replicas available of our application. So Kubernetes will roll it out gracefully when we do upgrades. We also tell Kubernetes the port we want to expose for our application. And the other thing we say is the we pass in this thing called liveliness probe. So we tell Kubernetes um, how to monitor our application. So Kubernetes control loops will constantly run based on these timer settings we specify and it will probe our application to make sure it's always up and running. And if it's not, it will gracefully restart the application so we don't have to be, get up at night and customers don't have to experience outages. We also define resource limits in our apps. And this is something very new to modern um, distributed systems is we're able to 
define and tell Kubernetes how much memory and CPU we expect our application to use and the upper limits of um, what it can use so that it it kind of limits noisy neighbor concerns and allows Kubernetes to make smart decisions of where to schedule our application on what infrastructure. So the easiest way to understand what a Kubernetes pod is, is to think of it as a virtual machine. Think of it as your traditional server that you're used to. Now a pod can have multiple containers. The containers are the applications or the processes that we want running on this machine. So we define a pod, and then we define our application inside a container that will run inside that pod. And what that allows us to do is we can have multiple containers inside a pod. So one is our application. One can be a Redis cache. We can have another container in there for a monitoring agent. It kind of gives us the flexibility to run whatever we want to run inside of a virtual machine called like the pod. So when we go back to this deployment um, YAML that I showed you, the deployment is where we specify how we want the application to be deployed and inside the deployment is the spec. This is the pod spec. So this is where we define the um, basically what the pod looks like for the deployment. And you can see here in my pod spec, I have one container. So you can just have an array with multiple containers if you need more than one process inside of that deployment. So how do we deploy this? Now, Kubernetes has a command line tool called kubectl. I did cover this in a previous video. I will link it in the description. Be sure to check that out. The command line helps you to navigate your Kubernetes cluster and do all kinds of advanced things with the cluster itself. So whenever we interact with the cluster, I'd like to use the command line so we can become more efficient at using it. So kubectl has this command to apply a deployment. So you can say kubectl apply and you apply YAML files. So you go dash F as the parameter. And then I'm just, I have a Kubernetes folder. I'm just going to go in there and I have a deployment folder under that. And I'm going to point to my deployment YAML. So I'm going to say kubectl apply, and this is going to take my desired state and pass it to Kubernetes. Kubernetes will then go and say, hey, I've created a deployment. And then we can say kubectl uh, get deployment or deploy, which is short for deployment. And we can now see that we have two out of two applications. So two pods are now running for this deployment. It is available and its age is 10 seconds. Now I also talk about my kubectl describe command, um, which is very useful. kubectl has a command called describe and you can describe pods, you can describe deployments as well. So we're gonna say describe deployments and we pass in our name of the deployment. Now Kubernetes will basically tell us a bunch of things about this, which is like the statuses, um, the memory limits, the liveliness probes and events. Um, and this can help us troubleshoot the application. So if we find our application is crashing, there's a crash loopback, um, or there's an image pullback, mean may maybe the image that we've deployed is not available. Crash loopback means the pods or the containers themselves are throwing errors. So we'll look, take a look at that in a second. Um, but there can be multiple different statuses that will tell you why your uh, deployment is failing. So kubectl describe helps um, resolve these kind of issues. So we can also run the kubectl get pods command and that will show us the two pods and their statuses that they're running. Now, if there is a problem I described earlier, we can say kubectl describe pod and we can pass in the name of the pod and we can get a lot more details again, similar to the deployment, but we'll get some details about the events, which is very useful. You can see here that um, it scheduled our application to the node. It started pulling the image and created and started our app. So the describe command gives us these events that help us troubleshoot. If we have a crash loopback in our application, that means our application is throwing an error and Kubernetes will constantly try and restart it to make sure our desired state is met. So to troubleshoot that, we can use the logs command. So we say kubectl logs in the name of the pod and that'll give us the logs that our application is printing out. So you should be able to see stack traces and things from here and troubleshoot your application. All right, folks, so that is it for deployments, pods, desired state how to get the logs, how to describe your pods, how to describe your deployments. Next up, we'll be taking a look at configuration management. So how do we decouple configuration from our source code and deploy and configure our apps in Kubernetes? So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, peace.